our group, group number five. five. I am Anthony Christian L. Lopez. I'm Kenneth M. Mecha. I'm Daniel Iziganay. And I am Nivain Erica Del Santos. The topic that we will be discussing is about wing structure and configuration. So first of all, let us define what a wing is. A wing is a part of an airplane that lifts it up in the air. The wings generate most of the lift to hold the plane in the air, which is an essential component in providing the aircraft with lateral stability. To generate lift, the airplane must be pushed through the air. The air resists the motion in the form of aerodynamic drag. Modern airliners use winglets on the tips of the wings to reduce drag. Then the turbine engines which are located beneath the wings provide the thrust to overcome drag and push the airplane forward through the air. There are two types of wings in terms of its shape. First is the symmetrical and the second one is the asymmetrical. Given the same flying conditions such as angle of attack, the same airspeed, the same density of the air, both symmetrical and asymmetrical wings can produce lift. However, the asymmetrical wing is designed to create more lift and less drag, while the symmetrical wings are best used for aerobatic aircrafts. Now continuing with our discussion under the wing structure, we have a cantilever type of aircraft which has no external bracing and a semi-cantilever aircraft which uses external bracings such as struts and wires. A few high wing and most low wing airplanes have a full cantilever wing designed to carry the loads without external struts. The principal structural parts of the wing are our spars, string urge which gives rigidity by stiffening the skin, the rib by maintaining airfoil shape and transmit load from the skin to the spar, and our strut which are bracings that carry compressive load are reinforced by thrusses, eye beams, tubing, or other devices, including our skin, which carries a part of the load imposed during flight and transmit it to the rib. The wing ribs determine the shape and thickness of the wing, which is our airfoil, and in most modern airplanes, the fuel tanks are either an integral part of the wing structure or consisting of flexible containers mounted on the side of the wing. Attached to the rear of the wing are our trailing edges of the wings are two types of control surfaces referred to as ailerons and flaps. Ailerons extend from about the midpoint to each wing outward towards our tip and move in opposite directions to create aerodynamic forces that cause the airplane to roll. Flaps extend outward from the fuselage to near the midpoint of each wing. The flaps are normally flush with the wing surface during cruising flight and when extended, the flaps move simultaneously downward to increase the lifting force of the wing for takes, takeoffs and landings. Now let's go on to how our wing ribs are created. We have two ways of creating a wing rib, which is on the first one, we have the stamp wing rib. The nose ribs are stamped from aluminum alloy sheets or machined parts, and these ribs are U-shaped and may have their web sections stiffened. Regardless of their design, their purpose is to give contour to the leading edge, and stiffeners are used to stiffen the leading edge and supply a base for fastening the nose skin. And next one is the machined wing rib, in which wing ribs are predominantly manufactured from raw aluminum alloys. These are light and have a high load bearing capacity and are extremely robust. In order to be enabling this alloy to be machined successfully, the machine tool processes and milling strategies must be designed to perfectly suit the alloy. And on our fuel tanks, um, which are normally located in the inboard portion of the wing, 
we have three different types of fuel tanks which are the removable metal containers the bladder fuel cell tanks and the integral fuel tanks which are built into the basic wing structure and cannot be removed um, these are also referred to as the wet wing portion of our airplane and on our wing structure we have the drag wire that resists backward forces anti-drag wire which resists our forward forces and the false ribs which do not span um, the entire wing cord there are also external braces which are interplane struts that resist bending and twisting the bracing wires which are flying wires or our landing wires and also the cabane strut which is a wing strut attached to the fuselage which are common in our parasol wing configurations drag and anti-drag wires may also be found in a wing as i've mentioned earlier they are shown crisscrossed between the spars to form a truss and resist forces acting on the wing in the direction of the wing cord these tension wires are also referred to as tie rods the wire designed to resist the backward forces is called our drag wire the anti-drag wire resists the forward forces in the cord direction in which this um, figure illustrates the structural components of a basic wood wing at the inboard end of the wing sparse is some form of wing attached fitting as illustrated this provides a strong and secure method for attaching the wing to the fuselage in which the interface between the wing and the fuselage is often covered with fairing to achieve smooth airflow to this area here's AC to talk about the next part of our discussion thank you Daniel the next topic is wing configuration the first one is number of wings the number of wings there are five types of wing monoplane biplane triplane quadruplane and multiplane the second one the second is wing vertical location it has different types wing high wing low wing and mid wing the the third one is wing platform which is the shape and layout of the wing next is the fourth one is sweep configuration it is sometimes used to adjust the center of lift when the wing cannot be attached in the ideal position the fifth is wing shape wings are air falls that when move rapidly through the air create lift and they are built in many shape and size and the last is wing installation the wings of the wings of an aircraft can be attached to the fuselage at the top at the at the mid or at the bottom monoplane type of aircraft with a single pair of wings the monoplane design has been nearly universally adopted over multi multiplane configuration well this monoplane most common wing configuration used in airplanes it refers to a single wing that extends horizontal across an airplane's body there are several subtypes several subtypes of wings some which include low mon monoplane mid wing monoplane shoulder wing monoplane and high wing monoplane next is biplane airplane with two wings one above the other in the 1890s this configuration was adopted for some successful piloted gliders 
this biplane while not as common as monoplane some airplanes use a biplane wing con a biplane wing configuration by um, this biplane refers to the use of two wings or more wings as shown in the photo the biplane configuration typically consists of two wings with one wing located over the other wing with that said by by plane wings can have three or more wings next is triplane an airplane having three wings arrange one above the other triplane arrangement has a narrower wing cord than a biplane of similar span and area this triplane a type of airplane with three pairs of wing as shown in the photo one above the other um, that can that can produce more leaf and also the drag is also higher when when the wings are increased the next is quadruplane uh, and multiplane is also type of wing configuration the next part of con configuration is vertical wing location um, high wing adapted by most cargo VTOL general aviation aircraft higher climax use of fairings external struts blisters reduce ground effect angle between the fuselage center line and the wing cord line at its root also safer engine propeller clearance or FOD and last is more lateral stable uh, this high wing um, they are the wings set set on the top of set on the top of the air, airplane's body um, that located in the fuselage um, also high wings are very stable at slower speed meaning they can right themselves quickly if they encounter turbulence while traveling slowly these are the example of high wing cargo aircraft eases and facilitates the loading and unloading also safe propeller and clear safe propeller clearance this cargo aircraft um, it is designed for the carriage of cargo rather than passengers such aircraft usually do not incorporate passengers amenities and generally generally feature one or more large door for loading cargo it is not especially for passengers for only transport transporting then next is the next example of high wing is GA aircraft. It facilitates installation of a strut. Aircraft structure is lighter when struts are employed. This type of aircraft includes a wide range of aircraft. Mm. All uh, all non-scheduled flights that are not operated commercial airlines or by the military identified as a general aviation these are not um, operated by commercial airlines or any any kinds of airline like military they only use for hire or in or even an occasion 
The next example of high wing is VTOL aircraft. This aircraft is a fighter jet that wings are located at the top that achieve lift in forward flight by planning the air their uh, planning the air therefore it achieving the speed and fuel efficiency that is typically greater than the capability of helicopters um, meaning it uses it uses the air that flows in the wing as as the use to achieve speed and the the use of uh, the fuel efficiency also vital aircraft saves the wing structure from high temperature exit gases and also minimized wing wash that's all for my topic then next is Kenneth he will discuss about the low wing low wing and mid wing thank you AC and now let us talk about the vertical wing location in low wing firstly it is adapted by commercial transport airline another thing is it has improved takeoff performance third is the hydral wing for ground clearance and another one is for less downwash effect on tail surface. Another thing is nose down pitching moment. And another one again is convenient retraction system. And lastly, generally lighter in weight. Dihedral wing. Dihedral angle between a line perpendicular to the axis of symmetry of the airplane and projection of the wing axis on a plane perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of airplane. It makes the aircraft laterally more stable. The wing drag produces a nose down pitching moment so a low wing is longitudinally stabilizing. This is true to the lower position of the wing drag line relative to the aircraft center of gravity. A Dutch roll is a combination of rolling and yawing oscillations that occurs when the dihedral effects of an aircraft are more powerful than the directional stability. And now, let us move on to another vertical wing location which is mid-wing. It has a better rolling movement than high-wing and low-wing aircrafts. They have better rolling stability. Another one is, it can get lift in vertically reverse direction. This is what enables stunt aircrafts to flip and fly. Aircraft with wings attached at the mid portion of the fuselage is known as mid-wing aircraft. Generally, almost all the combat aircrafts are mid-wing aircrafts. Mid-wing aircrafts use symmetrical aerofoils unlike high-wing and low-wing aircraft. An aerobatic aircraft is an aerodyne, a heavier than air aircraft used in aerobatics, both for flight exhibitions and aerobatic competitions. Fighter aircraft is an aircraft designed primarily to secure control of essential airspace by destroying, destroying enemy aircraft in combat. The opposition may consist of fighters of equal capability or of bombers carrying protective armament. The next topic is about wing platform. Wing platform is the shape or platform of the wing when viewed from above looking down onto the wing and deals with airflow with three dimensions. The rectangular wing is the simplest to manufacture. It is the non-tapered, straight wing that is mostly used in small aircrafts. This wing extends out from the aircraft's fuselage at right angles approximately. Rectangular wing has similar efficiency to elliptical wing. The disadvantage of this is it is not aerodynamically efficient. So next is the elliptical wing. The elliptical wing is aerodynamically most efficient because elliptical spanwise lift distribution induces the lowest possible drop. As we shall see, its sole characteristics in some respects are inferior to the rectangular wing. It is also comparatively difficult to construct. 
However, the manufacturability of this aircraft wing is poor. It is true that the elliptical wing provides the best lift coefficient before reaching an incipient stall. It gives little advance warning of the complete stall, and lateral control may be difficult because of poor aileron effectiveness. Moving on to the tapered wing, it was designed by modifying the rectangular wing. The cord of the wing is varied across the span for approximate elliptical lift distribution. The tapered wing was designed by modifying the rectangular wings. The tapered airfoil is desirable from the standpoint of weight and stiffness but it is not efficient aerodynamically as the elliptical wing. In order to preserve the aerodynamic efficiency of the elliptical wing, rectangular and tapered wings are sometimes tailored through the use of wing twist and variation in airfoil sections until they provide as nearly as possible the elliptical wing slip distribution. So here are another shapes of wings, the delta wing. This low aspect ratio wing is used in supersonic aircrafts. The main advantage of the delta wing is that it is efficient in all regimes, supersonic, subsonic, and transonic. Moreover, this type of wing offers a large area for the shape, thereby improving maneuverability and reducing wing loading. Next is the swept back wing. The aircraft wings whose leading edges are swept back are called swept back wings. Swept back wings reduce drag when an aircraft is flying at trasonic speeds. Sweep back is the rearward slant of a wing horizontal tail, or other airfoil surface. And lastly, the reverse taper wing. Improved cross-sectional area distribution allows for a smaller fuselage weight penalty. It is apparent that, overall, the flow structures on some platform shapes are very similar. Despite the drastic differences in geometry, this implies that platform shape generally has little effect on the flow structure over the wing. Let us now move on to the sweep configuration. Wings may be swept back or occasionally forwards for a variety of reasons. A small degree of sweep is sometimes used to adjust the center of the lift when the wing cannot attach in the ideal position for some reason, such as a pilot's visibility from the cockpit. Sweep angle is the angle between a line perpendicular to the plane of symmetry of the airplane and the horizontal projection of the reference line in the wing. In the sweep back or swept wing, the wing sweeps rearwards from the root to the tip. In early tailless examples, such as the Dune aircraft, this allowed the outer wing section to act like a conventional empennage to provide aerodynamic stability. At transonic speeds, swept wings have lower drag, but can handle badly in or near a stall and require high stiffness to avoid aeroelasticity at high speed. The variable sweep is a solution to constant sweep problems, weight penalty due to the pivot mechanism complexity. The variable sweep is also known as the swing wing. The left and the right wings vary their sweep together, usually backwards. It is seen in few types of military aircraft, such as the General Dynamics F-111 Hotbox. Last is Oblique Wing. It has offshoot design, pivot obliquely from 1 to 60 degrees during flight. It is a single full-span wing pivot about its midpoint so that one side sweeps back and the other side sweeps forward. There are disadvantages of sweep wing that leads to be its consequences. There are the characteristic of this consequence of sweep wing are compressibility drug, weight, stall behavior, stability, and aesthetic. Moving on to the last part of our discussion, which is the wing configuration based on support. There are two types of wing support, the cantilevered and braced wing. 
The cantilevered is self-supporting. All this structure is buried under the aerodynamic skin, giving a clean appearance with low drug. Cantilevered wing is a wing that uses no external struts or bracing. All support is obtained from the wing itself. Semi-cantilevered wing, on the other hand, these are the wings that have wires or struts to support the wing. Nearly all multi-plane signs are braced. Some monoplanes, especially early designs, are also braced to save weight. Braced wings have two types. First is the strut braced. One or more stiff strut struts help to support the wing. A strut may act in compression or tension, and different points in the flight rejoin. And the other one is the wire brace. Alone as the Boeing P-26 P shooter, or more usually, in addition to struts, tension wires also help to support the wings. Unlike a strut, a wire can act only in tension. To support itself, a wing has to be rigid and strong consequently may be heavy. By adding external bracing, the weight can be greatly reduced. Originally, such bracing was always present, but it causes a large amount of drug at higher speed and has not been used for faster design since the early 1930s. And that concludes our discussion about wing structure and configuration. I hope you have learned something from us. And thank you for watching. Bye!